Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing a general review and uh, feature demonstration of the OBD Link SX Automotive OBD uh, Error Code and Status Reading System. So the purpose of this device is you connect it to the OBD2 port on your car, if it's a modern car with an OBD2 port. You connect the other side to the USB port on your computer, and using the included software that comes with it, which it will uh, tell you how to install, you can monitor all the telemetry on the different variables on your vehicle. Uh, you can actually monitor everything from oxygen sensors, uh, fuel usage, uh, RPM, engine temperature, fuel rail pressure, there's all kinds of variables that it can measure and graph. And you can also use it, of course, probably what most people would use it for, is to read out uh, the diagnostic codes if you have, for example, a check engine light. This allows you to figure out what's wrong with the car so you can then fix it. And once you've fixed it, it also will allow you to reset the code. Now, before I go any further, I should mention that in certain states, these are not actually legal to use. So beware if you're going to purchase one of these you do so at your own risk and you may be in violation of your state's rules on OBD readers. Now that being said, another word of caution is that since this has an interface on the computer that is meant to be used while driving when you're doing diagnostics, I have to recommend that you do not ever take your eyes off the road and look at this monitor. Instead, you should use the plotting feature to keep track of what information is being displayed. That way you can go back and review it later. So be sure and not, uh, don't distract yourself while driving by using this device. So the next part of this video, I'm actually going to screen capture from my laptop to show you some of the features of the software. And then after that, I'm going to actually go and test it out uh, and show you what it will look like when you're operating it. So I'm going to show you in a second on my computer. Beware that the microphone quality on my computer is not that great. I will be using a better microphone when I'm out driving but uh, just a forewarning for that. So this is what the software interface looks like. This program is called OBD Wiz, and you download it from a linked website in the instruction manual for the OBD Link SX. Now, once you get it uh, set up, you basically will have to connect it to your device. Now, in the next part of this video, I will already have done that once I start recording for the automotive test operation part. And once you've connected and it's uh, synchronized with your vehicle, you can go to diagnostics and this will tell you if there are any co error codes or uh, errors with the check engine light or any other indicator light on the vehicle. You can go to monitors and this will actually allow you to select different, uh, different parameters to measure if need be. And the most fun one I think is the dashboard. This can tell you your total miles per gallon, your instantaneous miles per gallon, your fuel usage, your overall fuel used, distance, trip counter, and it also has RPM miles per hour, and the two that I think are really cool, engine temperature and engine load. Now, I'm not, I haven't actually figured out how it calculates engine load. I'm not sure if this is based on throttle position or based on the overall calculated horsepower output of the engine, but uh, when we go out and test this, I'll be able to investigate that. And a third thing that's really, really cool, or actually a fourth thing that's really cool about this is the data logging. You can actually keep track of every single variable in the entire OBD system using this monitor. And you can keep track for uh, up to like 500 or more seconds of uh, data. So I'm actually gonna be, of course, testing this as well to see what kind of uh, parameters I can measure. And you can also then make calculations to see what is the most efficient way to drive? Um, when, how high do you want to rev the engine to get maximum power output, maximum efficiency? Basically analyzing your driving style and fine tuning your performance. So for the next part of the video, I'm gonna go out, start up the engine and get this thing going. Apologies for the wind. This is our vehicle under test here. It's a 2004 Ford Ranger with approximately 118,000 miles on it. It has a 2.3 liter nominal 143 horsepower four cylinder engine under the hood. And it is in somewhat of a dire need of new spark plugs and apparently a, car, a wash of the car because there's some bird poop on it. But what we're gonna do is take it out and test it 
see what kind of performance we get. Uh, I don't think the OBD reader will read out peak horsepower, but it will read all the telemetry on the different components of the engine, as well as the general driving, uh, so I can analyze my driving habits, see when I'm revving it, when I'm not revving it, and I can determine whether I'm driving efficiently or inefficiently, and I can actually adjust my uh, driving style to suit. Now this is a manual transmission vehicle, so I have a lot of control over how I drive it, and by, doing, uh, by exploiting that control, I can either derive great horsepower from it or great fuel economy, and possibly a little of both if I'm really good. So we'll see how it goes. To install the OBD Link cable, find your OBD plug under the dashboard. It'll be somewhere under your steering wheel depending on where the, uh, what type of vehicle it is. Line up the pins, plug the device in so it fits snugly, and then plug the other side, the USB cable, into your computer. Now once you have it connected to your computer, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see on the camera, there's a lot of glare, but you'll go to setup and you'll click the connect button. Now it won't connect at first, it won't work properly. What you need to do is put the engine into first position with the keys. So what you do is you take your keys, set your engine so that the dashboard lights are on, as you can see here. Now retry the connection. When you click retry, if I can find my cursor here, now it should connect, read the information, now it's connected. So now I'll switch to the screen cap and we can continue to see more information. All right, so I've had this thing out for a drive and as you can see, my total miles per gallon are uh, quite good for this vehicle, 30.5. I've gone 19.43 uh, miles on this drive and uh, I burned just over half a gallon of fuel. Now a few things that I've learned that I actually did not realize about this system is that the load calculation is nothing more than the throttle position. In fact, it's got nothing to do with the percentage of the peak horsepower that the engine produces. It's, not, it's just the throttle. For example, if I blip the throttle, it bumps to 100 for a couple of seconds, even though I only touched it for like a split second. There it goes, and it goes down and up a bit. So uh, it's kind of interesting how that works. So uh, in this next part of the video, I'm going to take it out for some more driving since I'm uh, on the other side of town. I need to drive back home now and I'll comment a bit of information about what's going on and uh, you can observe a few things including the temperature, average mile per miles per gallon and instantaneous miles per gallon as well as the load uh, calculation or throttle position depending on how I'm driving. So now I'll get out and uh, start making the trip home and you can observe some of the phenomena. Alright, so on this next part of the video, I'm going to be accelerating fairly rigorously to get on the freeway. Target shift point, 4500 RPM. So now I've got it right up to the speed of traffic, fairly quickly without too much trouble. But as you can see, I had to rev fairly high and keep the throttle basically wide open through most of that acceleration. Now that's not exactly the most efficient way to drive. In fact, if I wanted to be very efficient, I would try to keep my throttle position below 50% during the acceleration. But since I have to match the speed of traffic, and since it's a merge lane, I have to rev fairly high and derive as much horsepower as I can out of the engine to get the job done. So now that I'm driving at a slightly higher speed, keep an eye on that temperature gauge, because you'll notice it actually is going to level out, or actually already has leveled out at 240 Fahrenheit. But even though I'm running it under fairly high power conditions, it doesn't go any higher than that under these conditions. So it's fairly evident that 240 degrees Fahrenheit is the set point for this uh, coolant system. Now one interesting thing about that is you would expect normal distilled water to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But since this system has refrigerant, uh, or not refrigerant, uh, coolant mixed in, it's an ethylene glycol solution. It has a bo both a higher, uh, lower freezing point and a higher boiling point. And that means you can carry a lot more heat out of the system without the coolant system over pressurizing due to the boiling coolant. Just an interesting observation there. 
as you can see, when I'm on the freeway driving just a little over 65, my average uh, throttle position is somewhere between 70 and 80 percent. So this engine is being pushed quite hard to keep up this uh, keep up this speed. If I was trying to tow a very heavy load, or if I was uh, needing to accelerate fairly quickly, I would basically have to utilize all 143 nominal horsepower out of this thing. And even then, I might not be able to go at 75 if I was going out on the on the big interstate, wide open interstate roads. So it is good to keep in mind that uh, if you're buying a, a vehicle, particularly if you're buying a truck, if you think you're going to have to tow a fairly heavy load, you may want to opt for a slightly bigger engine. This 2.3 liter is very good for around town, and as you can saw, you can achieve a very good mile uh, gas mileage. For example, right now, coasting uh, down a slight incline, I'm getting over 36 miles per gallon uh, instantaneous. But the trade-off for having a smaller engine is it will take more power to get this, uh, more acceleration and more RPM to get the same amount of power out of it, and uh, you'll wear out the engine faster if you have to apply it to very, very large loads, like if you're towing uh, trailers or anything of that sort. So now I've moved to a more uh, kind of off the beaten path residential area, and I'm going to show you the performance of the system when you drive more conservatively. So my target shift point, instead of 4,500 RPM, like when I was accelerating onto the freeway, is instead going to be around 2,000 RPM. Now you don't ever want to shift too low because you may lug the engine, so you always want to keep it above around 1500 so you don't hear that kind of vibrating lugging sound from the engine as that wears the bearings out more quickly. But uh, to drive really uh, efficiently, you want to keep your RPMs lower. So I'll show you if I accelerate slightly. I'm going to accelerate fairly low, fairly slowly. And as I'm accelerating, I'm going to shift at fairly low RPM intervals and just kind of crawl along. This is a 25 neighborhood zone, so I don't have to go uh, very fast. Just keep the engine uh, in the 1500 to 2000 RPM range and uh, just let it roll. Now this will produce a very high efficiency. As you can see, well apart from the speed bumps, as you can see we're getting well over 50 miles per gallon. So uh, it's a fairly effective driving strategy if you don't need to accelerate very, uh, very much. So I'm back from the end of my drive, and I've got to say, I, uh, I have had so much fun using this thing. I've learned so much about my driving habits and about the efficiency of the system. And uh, honestly, the, the Ford Ranger has pretty good miles per gallon. 30.1 is not half bad for a truck this size. And... Uh, <laughs> I think I took it a little too far driving around town for 40 miles having fun with this thing, but man, it's really cool to learn all this information. If I go to my log setting, I can actually, so I can see my uh, data log charts here, but I can also go to stats and look at all my statistics. So let's take a look, for example, at the... Uh, well, we can look at the calculated load value. I was averaging over this trip roughly 46% throttle position, and uh, I averaged 32 miles per hour along this entire trip with a peak maximum of 72.7 miles per hour, and uh, my average RPM on this trip was 1633. Uh, I revved it up to 4200 when I went on that hard acceleration on the freeway, and uh, there's all this other information about different oxygen sensor values and uh, different voltages, I guess my minimum voltage would have been when I first started, that's the battery voltage. 14.4 would be the alternator's uh, maximum output voltage. And my maximum burn rate was 7 gallons per hour with a minimum of 0 and an average of 1.1 gallons per hour. So pretty cool statistics, pretty awesome program, and if you're interested in learning a lot about your vehicle's performance, or if you just need to check the code on a, uh, an OBD check engine light, I strongly recommend getting this. This is the OBD Link SX adapter. So, thank you for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.